Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day. So, today we'll continue the lecture for chapter 2, Sampling Distribution and Confidence Interval. Alright, so previous class, you have learned uh, uh, find confident interval for population 1 proportion, which is 2.4. So, today we'll cover 2.5, which is uh, to calculate or to find confident interval for difference between two population proportion. So instead uh, you have one population proportion or one pi, now you have two pi here. Alright, so for this subtopic, uh, the, the expected outcome, uh, you as a student should be able to estimate the confident interval for the difference between two population proportion. Alright, so this is the formula. Okay, this is the only formula and you can get it from your statistical table, page 6. Alright, so you can see here, instead of 1 pi, you have 2 pi. Pi 1 minus pi 2 or pi 2 minus pi 1. It depends on the question. So if here pi 1 minus pi 2, in the formula here, should be P1 minus P2. If here pi 2 minus pi 1, which one should be P2 minus P1. Alright, so this one plus minus and we also use z table all right and this is the rest standard deviation again the value should be between 0 and 1 lah. all right uh, so basically p you know is a sample proportion which is x over n okay now you have two population so it depends on the population so look this example uh, two different types of injection molding machine are used to form plastic parts Right, so the first sentence is just a story or just an info. You have two different types of injection molding machines. And then uh, a plastic part is considered defective if it has excessive shrinkage or is discolored. So here you can see that there is a hint shows you defective. Alright, so okay, maybe in our mind it, it could be proportion okay but you need to read uh, the whole uh, the whole problem okay two random sample right so you have two random sample each of size 300 so that's mean let's say you have uh, two types of injection molding that's mean you have um, machine one oh, and then you have machine two isn't it okay because you have two types of injection molding machine so each of the machine you have 300 sample right okay um, sorry for the handwriting eh, because i use mouse um, my pen is not yet come right so n1 is 300 and then you have n2 also 300 okay because you can see that the keywords there is random sample each size 300 are selected okay and then 15 defective parts are found in the sample from machine 1 so 15 defective what is it is it x or is it p so if you look here this is number of defective parts you have 15 isn't it so it will be x1 right so your x1 is 15 Okay, defective. And then usually I put here not only one. I put here D. So I know this is the value for defective item. Alright. And then why eight defective parts are found in the sample machine 2. So here I will have X2D. Okay, D means defective lah in my notation here. So here is 8. Alright, so this is the info that I get from the third sentence. Alright, construct a 98% confident interval. So you can see here, this is the question. They ask you to find confident interval. How much or how many percentage? 98%. So from here you know that your alpha is equal with 0 0.02. Okay, how you get 0 0.02? 100 minus 98 lah. Alright. Uh, on the difference in two population proportion. So, they ask you to find confident interval. 
you have many parameters, all right, but which one they focus or they ask. So if you look the question here, they ask you two population proportion. Okay, and even if you look from the second sentence, they are talking about defective, right? That's mean you have two outcome, defective and non-defective. And this one, two population proportion, that's mean you have pi 1 and pi 2. Okay, you have pi 1 and you have pi 2. So this is the population proportion, okay, of defective parts. Uh, this one also is very important. Sometimes, given the data in defective part, but the question asks you non-defective part. Okay? So, you must look carefully the question, what they want. Alright? So, we you know that two population proportion, you only have one formula to be used. Okay? Which is this one. Okay? So, uh, then you have the data here. Alright, so from the formula here, you need to find P1, P2, isn't it? So, can you find it from here? Sure, yes. Okay, so that's mean your P1, oh, your P1 will be 15, oh my God, what happened? 15, yeah, 15 over 300. Um, and then your P2 will be... Um, 8 over 300 okay so this is your p1 p2 and then from the question here they didn't mention which one come first okay so usually we use pi 1 minus pi 2 lah okay some question they mention which one come first so which one come first will be the first uh, data that you use okay so if you look the second slide so this is the info that we discussed just now all right and then your alpha is 0 0.02 because this is confident interval, you need to divide 2, okay? So, this is the only formula you have, okay? So, make sure you write like this lah. A 98% confident interval for difference between two population proportion. Or you write down pi 1 minus pi 2 here. And this is the formula. Okay, make sure you use this, the correct formula. Then, you have your P1, P2, N1, N2. And this Z value, you need to find from the Z table, page 36, okay. Your alpha should be divided by 2 because uh, this is two-sided confident interval, okay. So, if you look uh, 0 0.01, alpha equal to 0 0.01, you get 2.3263. So, all the data, all the information is here. You just substitute into the formula and then you calculate you get uh, this value okay so make sure make sure here you must uh, do the minus operation first then the uh, the additional operation okay make sure the 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 lower bound must be lower value compared to the upper bound okay all right so now you can see that you have uh, from the question they ask you to interpret the answer okay so this is how you interpret okay but since we have negative value here so it will be quite different from the previous one or from the normal one okay so if you look here we are 98 percent confident that the difference in the two true proportion for the defective parts uh, defective plastic, plastic part produced by using machine 1 and machine 2 is between 1.31% more by machine 2. Okay, how do you get more by machine 2? Ni? It's come from this one. Okay, for this side, you can see that uh, pi 2 is more than pi 1. So, actually this one you get from this mathematical operation. Lah. You need to the right, to the left and so on. Okay. And then 2, 5.97% more by machine 1. So you can see that machine 1 is more than pi 2 or machine 2. Okay. Compared to each other respectively. So this one uh, you need to know from here. Lah. Okay. Uh, and don't forget from the, from the answer here. When you interpret, you must convert to percentage. And don't forget to put unit. Okay, so now we move to uh, the next slide. 
So the next slide is about one-sided lower bound and one-sided upper bound. So the same concept from previous previous lecture, I mean in the confident interval topic, when they say one-sided lower bound and one-sided upper bound, your alpha should not divide by 2. Alright, and then if they ask you one-sided lower bound, it will be on the left side. And then this is the formula. You take the left formula, alright, the lower bound formula, which is you use uh, minus or subtract operation, right? And then if you have upper bound, one-sided upper bound, you will have additional operation, okay? And then look the range from where to where. If you have lower bound, this is what you calculate. And then until 1. Okay, because this is proportion, you only have data between 0 and 1. And then uh, for this one, you calculate, you calculate is here. So it will be from here, 0 until what you calculate. Alright. So the, apa, usually the question will ask you lah, either one-sided lower bound or one-sided upper bound. Okay, if they didn't mention one-sided, that means they ask you the normal confident interval. That means your alpha should be divided by 2. Right, so this is the exercise. Okay, for sure you need to do all the exercise. Okay, but maybe I want to see or I want to discuss during the class on uh, question number 2. Okay, uh, try do all question for sure, but we will discuss question number 2. In the online class so i think that's all for today all right thank you so much hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to read the module as well and the statistical table okay make sure you're familiar with the statistical table okay because um, you need to know lah what's the formula all right okay thank you class